Welcome back to my exploration of what physics has been weaponized. In this film, I ask what physics is being kept secret, keeping us all in the dark about what is actually possible. Warfare has always exploited novel science. Since flint arrowheads gave the ancients a sharp tool for hunting, and secret metal alloys built better axes and swords, to the secret and exotic weapons used in ancient Greece to focus the sun's rays igniting wooden ships. Possibly the first directed energy weapon? These sign secrets gave one side an advantage over their enemy. Today we live in a world newly defined by physics. Quantum spooky spin, gravity waves, relativistic space-time, and a host of emerging ideas offering novel answers on how the universe might actually work. This science offers today's military the cutting-edge advantage it wants. They exploit novel science, keeping us citizens and their enemies in the dark about new, weird technology such as metamaterials, unmanned aerial vehicles, terahertz waves, quantum radar, plasma visualization, aerogel drones, and even time dilation. We are not allowed to know what they really have in their arsenal. Occasionally, the curious catch a glimpse of something that should not be seen, only to be fobbed off with stories of UFOs. But the truth is stranger than fiction. The weapons are weirder than we can envisage. So today, let's pull back the curtain, expose the wizard by learning from science what might be possible and what secretly has been built in this era of the weaponization of physics. So what I was planning to do was to look at the top five bits of interesting science that had been weaponized since World War II. But what I discovered is amazing. The top thing that the military has been investigating is anti-gravity. Now, anti-gravity is basically bollocks. But is it? The answer is sadly yes. People have explored various methods to make things lighter, reducing gravity. Gravity really isn't its own force, like electromagnetism. It's actually a byproduct of how space and time is warped by mass. That's very interesting. There have been various devices put forward that apparently overcome gravity by producing lift. My favorite, of course, is Eric Lathwaite's spinning gyroscope. It's absolutely true, and I feel so sorry for wonderful Eric Lathwaite. He noticed that a spinning gyroscope has a vector pointing upwards, so you can lift a very heavy metal spinning disc, apparently with ease. But that's actually a known force of nature. It is actually Newtonian physics. It's about one reaction having an opposite reaction. And I think he got into a lot of trouble by saying that it was possibly a new force of nature when it wasn't. The second class of devices, which I see all the time, are these wire coat hanger spinning disc things, mainly from Russia. And if you notice, they are always connected to an electrical supply because they're actually, in my humble opinion, mainly ionic wind drives. At the bottom of the coat hangers are points, and out of it is a stream of ions, which partially turns our air into a plasma, producing buoyancy. They're not really anti-gravity. They're a device that produces lift. I think that's very interesting, because I know the Air Force have experimented with plasma over heavy bombers' wings to reduce drag, and also to mask a radar signature. The Soviet Union. Now, Russia also had a plane that was entirely wrapped in plasma. And that was great for stealth, but really rubbish at night because it glowed bright blue. <laughs> but you can't deny that anti-gravity, or better, gravity modification hasn't been looked at. 
NASA had a whole department studying it at the Johnson Space Center. And as you know, the wonderful Dr. Ron Evans ran Project Green Glow. I was partially paid for by British Aerospace, now BAE or BAE Systems, that looked at various aspects of how gravity works. He didn't actually come up with a device that actually functioned, but he certainly put a lot of feelers out into the physics community of higher education looking at gravity modification. So that's, as, that's really as far as I got um, until I actually heard from Porton Down, which I always assumed was the British lab doing biological and chemical research, is actually a center of excellence for physics. They've come up with this. It's a quantum remote gravity detector. Trapped by a ring of lasers, maybe, in this evacuated chamber are these quantum pairs, maybe, <laughs> of atoms which can detect a human or an object at a distance. That's very interesting. And Dr. Ron Evans pointed me in various directions that he thought that I should be looking at. And he opened my eyes to an amazing fact. Now, you're all smart and you all know that Einstein did define gravity in his special relativity. What he said is that things of high mass, like a star, our sun is a good example, actually distort space and time. And that was proven very much in probably the very, very best science experiment ever done. And that was the hunt for the missing planet Vulcan. If you lived at the end of the 19th century, your broadsheet newspaper would be full of the headline, Have We Found Planet Vulcan? Planet Vulcan needed to exist. It was mathematically proven that there should be a planet between Mercury and the Sun because Mercury's orbit is perturbed by another gravitational mass. And when people looked for it, they couldn't see it. They thought the best chance of seeing the planet was during a total eclipse of the sun. And many expeditions looking at the eclipse also looked for planet Vulcan, and they never found it. But this man, a genius British mathematician, worked out that possibly Vulcan didn't exist. It was actually a distortion of space by gravity. So Mercury isn't actually there, it's actually there because space is distorted by the mass of the Sun. And he eventually proved that during an eclipse by looking at a star distant from the Sun and measuring its position, but when the Sun isn't there, the star is in a different place. So proving that Einstein was right, that space is warped. But hang on a minute. Einstein, Albert Einstein didn't say gravity distorts space. He said gravity distorts space and time. The distortion of time is the ultimate weaponization of physics and is currently being worked on. For the last few days, I've been digging into this for you. There's two ways of possibly doing it. First of all, is to go very fast. If it's possible to build a device that flies at tens of thousands of miles an hour, you don't know where it is because it's in a different time zone to you as the observer. So if you see it with radar, with your eyes, with all your senses you've got there, it's actually already there because your clock works differently from the clock on board something traveling very fast. We know this because your sat-nav in your car only works because we compensate for fast-moving objects, the GPS satellites. And I think modern-day Russia has threatened NATO with these super hypersonic missiles. And they say they can't be shot down not because they're impossible to hit, it's because they're impossible to hit where they are, because they're not there, they're there. From what I know, those weapons exist today, probably on both sides of the divide. But there's another really interesting way 
to alter time. We all explored the fascinating science of gravity in time in the film Interstellar, where the characters go to a planet very near a supermassive black hole, and for every hour they spent on that planet, seven years elapsed on Earth. So their time on the planet was extremely limited because, of course, their family and people they know were aging more rapidly than they were. That's science fact. If you could alter gravity, you can alter time. Imagine a weapon system that could alter the gravity field around an airplane or a tank. The tank would appear there, you would fire at it, but in fact it's there. It's the ultimate camouflage. So has this really been worked on? Uh, yes. Hal Puthoff has certainly explored gravity modification with time dilation. And CERN have been doing three experiments with antimatter. They've actually built a complete atom of antimatter hydrogen. They let it go in an evacuated tube to see if antimatter would go up or descend. Well, antimatter has the same mass as ordinary matter, and in fact, it dropped under gravity. But the real experiment took place here at Project LIGO. What they discovered is gravity waves. Now, a gravity wave might not be a force of nature like electromagnetism, but it does actually exist and it travels through our universe. They can pick up waves of gravity disturbance that hit Earth from massive events in our cosmos. That means you could affect time at a distance using gravity. Now, all right, so, so stop. I've run out of my physics. I do not know what I'm talking about. I'm just bringing you the overview of what I've read. The nitty gritty of what I'm talking about is either deeply classified or extremely complicated. And that's why I'm going to make you an unbelievable offer. This film that you're currently watching on YouTube has already been published to Patreon. We're talking to top scientists. We're actually having a very interesting discussion about what you've just seen from me days ago. What's interesting is your knowledge about physics. So if you want to actually add something to this debate, you need to become a $3 a month Patreon just to unlock my science club and get involved with the top scientists of this world. It's an amazing offer. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can get involved in the best secret physics that's out there. So here on the screen now, is my email address that you can email me personally if you want to stay on YouTube, and I'll send you a notification when every new film is posted free of charge. Those are two fantastic offers for you. Join me on Patreon or join a mailing list for new films. The truth needs to be out there.